Hey DTMS fans, what's going on? It is Dan the Man Sings here with your monthly deck update to the Pokemon TCG. And yes, we are in August and you know what that means. The World Championships is just around the corner. Oh my God, I wish I was going to Hawaii. What an incredible experience it would have been. But sadly, the cost just got a little bit too much for me. I didn't quite make my world's pointage but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna bring you my top 10 decks that I think will make a huge impact on worlds. And obviously Shrouded Fable has just launched as well. So we are incredibly excited to bring you some updated decks today. Without further ado, let's get started with number 10. So number 10 is going to be Snorlax Control or Snorlax Stall. This is going to be a very similar Snorlax list that you've looked at before. And yes, Shrouded Fable has added a couple more cards into the deck itself. We've got Cornerstone Ogre Pond EX it with a more attacking role. So Snorlax can take on a fairly new form of being able to attack um, some decks there because obviously uh, Pokemon with abilities can't attack into the Ogre Pond. We've also got two fighting energy and a double turbo to help you power up that cornerstone Ogre Pond to get rid of some pesky Pokemon like Dusk and Skull and Dusk Noir that can obviously blow themselves up and put multiple damage counters on you. That's very important. We've then also got uh, decks like Charizard and Mimikyu that might do damage and we need to be careful about what they will do and we just need to make sure we just keep putting pressure on our opponents and stay behind in the prize race so we can use things like bravery charm defiance vest and also other cards like counter catcher to make sure that we can get the pokemon that we want into the active and lock them there i think that many people are kind of very familiar with snorlax control now they know how it works so i think yes this deck is still got a lot of potential and can still do a lot of disruption however i do believe that this deck is just about in the top 10 and if played properly it will do well but don't forget that obviously in a, in a best of three 50 minute format getting a draw with this deck is not going to do you too good at worlds because you have to get those seven wins or six wins in a draw to make sure you qualify for day two. In at number nine, we have got Chi and Pao EX. Now this deck really does have some momentum. It is still really good. It's got a couple of new additions from the new set. Fens and Dippity EX and of course Night Stretcher. Both of these cards can really do a lot in this deck. Whereas obviously Fens and Dippity lets you draw cards if you get knocked out. And obviously with Night Stretcher being able to put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand is very, very useful. And don't forget the Backscalibur is the backbone of this deck and being able to accelerate multiple energy from your hand to many different Pokemon is absolutely busted. Yes, we've still kept Iron Hands EX in there because it's very useful at taking out those low HP Pokemon. We've got Irida in there as well. We've got Cypher Maniacs there to make sure that we can obviously uh, put the top two cards on our deck. I've changed out the uh, Bidoof from the 60 HP to the 70 HP just to make sure that obviously decks like Dragapult can't take out our Bidoof before we evolve into the barrel. But yeah, this deck will see some play or worlds. If you synchronize it or sequence it correctly, this deck is absolutely amazing. But I just think that some people um, with the new Dust Noir EX and with obviously Dragapult EX, this deck doesn't cook as well as it used to. In saying that, let's move on to number eight. So the number eight deck is Dialga V-Star. Now this deck won the Indianapolis Regional and now we're gonna be seeing it where I didn't really see much of it before in the Twilight Masquerade format, but I have to say, I think it's gonna make an impact on worlds. Being able to get an extra turn is absolutely broken and if you can get it set up properly with those Matangs, he's got 15 metal energy in there and you can chain those energies and get those Diagra V scars built up very quickly. This 
deck is going to see a lot of momentum and obviously we've got Fens and Dippity in there so that obviously if you get knocked out you can draw three cards and obviously that helps a lot with consistency and as we know consistent decks are the ones that do well in a best of three format this can swing for huge numbers and I think that this again there will be a few day twos at Worlds when we get there later in the month. Taking our number seven spot is Lost Zone Box. Yes, this was like a number one or number two deck in the last format, but sadly, there is a new card from Shrouded Fable that could absolutely ruin this deck, and that is the Dragon Type Kyrim. That's right, if there is a Colrus or a card with Colrus in its name in your discard pile, it can attack for one colorless energy, and it can do 110 damage to three different Pokemon. It could take out your Cunt Phase, it could take out Sableye, and, it, and if you use a Canceling Cologne, it could even take out that Manaphy. This deck will still do incredibly well, and there are many different builds. You've got the Sable Zard build, you've got this build here on your screen with different stage two Pokemon to really smash high damage. Yes, Lost Zone is still a great deck, and it will still see a lot of play, but I just don't think at the moment with this new Kyrim and some other cards around that it is just not gonna be as popular as it once was. Moving on to number six, we have got Lugia V-Star. Yes, I absolutely love this deck, and with so many stage two Pokemon in the format at the moment, I think the going back to the Sincino Mincino build is the best way. Yes, we're also using the Water Ogre Pond or Spring Mask Ogre Pond EX that can smash for 100 damage and then shuffle three energy back in and you can hit 120 to the bench. This was the one thing that Lugia couldn't really do is do much bench damage, but with this new card, you could definitely hit some high numbers. There is excellent synergy there with obviously the Archeops being able to accelerate the special energies. And yes, we've got the Ursa Luna EX in there as well to obviously towards the end of the game, smash 240 damage for one or two energy. This deck is absolutely busted. We'll see a lot of play in the world's format. And with legacy energy, you are able to shuffle, obviously, uh, Luminion V back into the deck and use it again. And it doesn't get stuck there if you can't forget Snorlax Stall. A fantastic deck and a deck that I think we'll see a good 2 or 3% make it to day 2 at Worlds in Hawaii. In at number 5, we've got our former number 1, and that is Gardevoir EX. Similar to Chien Pao, it has not gained as many new cards as it could have. Obviously, with the new set being released, Dark Type is the primary focus, and sadly, this deck is weak to Dark Pokemon and therefore falls slightly short. Yes, Monkey Dory gave this a huge boost, and this deck is still gonna see a lot of play, but I just don't, I just think with new cards like Dust Noir and Dust Skull being able to explode and put damage counters all over the board, all those little um, Ralts and other Pokemon that have evolved into the Gardevoir are really gonna suffer, uh, especially things like Screamtail as well. Yes, this deck will see a lot of play. It is a fantastic, deck and if you have an IQ of 100 and above you will be playing this deck. This deck is the comeback deck so you never know it could win worlds but it will definitely see a lot of play in day two. Moving on up to number four we have got Dragapult EX. This deck is if you chain it right with Pidgeot EX, you can search for any card. And if you put in the new Dusk Noir, yes, not only are you putting on six damage counters um, between, you know, once you've done your move, but then you can also explode the Dusk Noir and put 13 damage counters all over the board. Yes, you don't mind giving your opponent an extra prize because you could technically take a three or four prize turn. This deck has suddenly got a lot more scary with the release of Shrouded Fable. Will it do well at Worlds? Of course it will. Has it got a better Charizard matchup? Hell yes. This deck potentially could win. I didn't quite place it high enough because I just think there's a couple more decks out there that are just slightly better, but this deck is going to see a ton of play and I'm very excited to be playing it at a cup later this month. 
Going in to number three, we have got Raging Bolt EX. Why have I put Raging Bolt above Dragapult, you ask? Well, I just think it's slightly more consistent and you can rack up a lot more damage a lot quicker with cards like Professor Seder's Vitality and Ogre, and obviously the um, Ogre Pond EX there, being able to accelerate an energy and then draw a card is just absolutely busted. And with Pheasant Deputy EX as well, if you get knocked out, being able to draw another three cards Cards, it just makes this deck very very consistent and yes I'll put in some poker stops as well to make sure you get those item cards that you need things like the poker gear the earthen vessels the energy retrievals to make sure you get the cards back that you need this deck can hit for massive numbers discarding six cards can do over 350 damage you can do some huge numbers with this and I think with all those stage 2 Pokemon those 300 plus HP Pokemon running around this deck is going to do well and yes you will see at least least one of these I reckon in top eight at Worlds. Moving on up to number two, we have got Reggie Drago EX with this amazing move that lets you copy any dragon Pokemon in the discard. That's right. Why is it shot up to number two? I hear you ask because of Kyrim and Haxorus from the brand new Shrouded Fable set. With Haxorus, if your Pokemon has a special energy attached to it, you can knock it straight out. That's right, Lugia V-Star, be very aware of this of this deck. It is going to cause you some problems as well. Dragapult, if it's got a Neo Upper Energy attached to it, you can knock it out. And obviously Lost Zone decks with Kyrim for one energy, smacking 110 damage. That's right, to three times. In fact, it didn't even need to be Lost Zone. It could just be any, you know, for the three, for the two grass and one fire you can be smacking 110 damage to three different Pokemon, knocking out lots of small prize Pokemon. This deck is a force to be reckoned with, and I think this is going to be a top eight contender at Worlds, and it could even go on and win the whole tournament. Do not sleep on this deck. It is incredible, and you will see it at a few cups and challenges coming up in the future. Yes, guys, we're here. We finally reached number one. Here we go, Charizard EX is back on top. Why is Charizard EX back on top? Because of, again, the Dust Noir line. Being able to explode and put 13 damage counters on different Pokemon, knock the Dusk Noir out and let Charizard do an extra 30 damage is absolutely broken. This deck could win worlds in fact if i was a betting man and i am i am betting that this deck will win worlds if it is not piloted by Tord or someone else it is gonna do very very well yes if you play this deck properly it doesn't take a huge amount of brain power and there are some fantastic new additions again there's and deputy ex forget if pokemon gets knocked out draw three cards it just adds to the consistency of this deck and yes if you are now playing with only five energy if you are very careful with your resources you can recycle those energy and take many prizes and end a best of three in 50 minutes very quickly to secure the win so there we go guys there is the top 10 for August, the Shrouded Fable um, metagame, and this is my world's list. Well, guys, thank you very much for following me along in this video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Leave any comments below and let me know what you think. Maybe tell me any additional cards I have missed, anything you think I should include, or tell me if you agree or disagree with the list. Anyway, this is what I think people are going to be playing at Worlds. Get prepared. If you're going to Hawaii, you are lucky, lucky people. I am very jealous, and I really do wish you the best of luck at Pokemon Worlds. Guys, as always, this has been a Dan the Man Sings video. If you've enjoyed the, co the content, if you enjoyed the video, please like the video, and if you really enjoy all my other videos, do give me a subscription. We love getting subs. We're nearly at 2,700, and it would be amazing if we got there very soon. Guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thank you very much, and all the best. Take care.